Yeah, and there was plenty of anticipation when it comes to, you know, specifically with, with Bustio and, and his recent um, triumph in Champions of last year. And so what kind of things has Bustio brought into the table as, as the new IGL and, and the things that, that, that he brings besides his leadership qualities? I think, um, obviously, you said besides leadership qualities, but I think it's one of the more focal points that we've noticed, um, especially with our team. Uh, I would say also simple stuff like trusting in ourselves, comms, everything, just, you know, the basic stuff. I think he um, elevates us on that level. And overall, just playing a lot more loose than last year. Uh, I think that's, like, one thing that we're trying to do. And, like, you know, if you see you have a play, go for it. And ideas like that. While also, you know, having set stuff for ultimates and stuff like that. But overall, I think he's just a good in-game leader. Oh, yeah, for sure. And what about EU um, and his contribution to the team? What's that been like mm -hmm. in addition to just having to work with a new IGO? What has, he, what's that, what has he brought into the table for this 100 teams uh, into a team that already has um, well-established people such as yourself? Mm-hmm. I think Dan uh, brings a lot to the team in terms of like calmness, uh, cool headed, level headed, terms like that. I would say where he won't be the first guy to you know just run in and make a mistake, anything like that. He'll always be last alive, trying to you know clutch out the round, stuff like that. Where he's very, um, yeah, like I said, cool headed, level heart, or you know just like calm, clutch, stuff like that. And uh, yeah, I think he's also pretty intelligent about like what he wants us to do and also he isn't afraid of saying what he thinks is the right play and also how to set him up the most so you know you need people that are like demanding in a way and i think um, we're really good at like you know facilitating that when you talk about the the attributes that these new teammates of yours bring to the team for this year and also during this off season how does that compare with what the team was like back then last year? You know, what with the, the team's ultimate results in the regular season and then also not qualifying for any um, international events um, in 2023. How, how, how does this iteration compare to, to, to the previous one? Um, I have no idea. We need to, you know, play it out and see how it goes. I think um, a lot of things that seem good in practice or, you know, they're, they're there in practice might not be there in match time. So only time can tell. I don't think I'm ready to make a comparison at the moment. Okay, I understand that. But I feel one thing that, that you can do at this moment in time is your reflection on 2023. Um, what do you feel now that we've been, um, it's been like half a year since, you know, the end of 100 Thieves have run in the, in the VCT for 2023. Um, how do you reflect on the team's performance in the entire season, last season, given all of his struggles and all of the talk about, you know, um, um, IG League and Stellar and the team's performance and stuff like that? So um, in reflecting off of that, what do you feel was the biggest issue that, that prohibited this team from, from doing well? Mm -hmm. um, honestly, I haven't really put much thought into it just because I know... Uh, we did a lot of things in practice, and we improved a lot throughout the year. And I just thought, you know, things just didn't go our way in a lot of times. And uh, I felt like the year was really overall unlucky, where we, you know, you could say we choked. And that's about it, really. I, I didn't think that we played bad or anything. We had a lot of ideas. I thought we were really good. But when it came down to it, uh, the last game, we just fumbled it, which gave EG the chance to, you know, go ahead and prove their worth. But I think uh, America's is a really tough league where... You know, it's the best league in the world. And any team that comes out of America's is always going to, you know, just dominate internationally. And EG happened to be that team where even though everyone's, like, clowning them before the season start, during the season, everything, they get to the international stage, they get top two, they win the champs. Uh, I think it's very understated how dominant America's is as a region where if you put us in any other region, we would have been just fine. We would have been the best team, you know. So that's like my take. Uh, and overall, I think the year... Um, maybe in some matches we could have been more confident, definitely. But overall, you know, if you watch back like some of our Furia, Lev, Games, Crew, I think we showed a lot of resilience and um, we were confident at times. So it's just tough to pinpoint when, you know, one day it's one thing and another day it's another thing. And also, I don't know what narratives there were about the team. Like you just brought up Stellar's IGLing, but I wouldn't put that 
as like the reason we lost. I thought Biden did a really good job. And overall, you know, he I was with him for like over a year and you know, I enjoyed every moment, made so many memories. So I can I'm not gonna, you know, just be here. Just yeah. Right, right. And 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 I wanted to take the focus on to the new coach, because of course, you know, your previous coach was Mike's, but then he moved down to the assistant coach to make way for Ziggs, who comes in as a head assistant back in EG. And so what kind of I what I what what is it like working under under him as the head coach and how, how does he compare with with that of what Mike's has done in that same position last year? Um, I'm not too sure because there's st Mike's still there, so we have Mike still you know adding everything that he did, and the position really doesn't matter, head coach or assistant coach. They still offer the same amount of input. It's not like Mike's now uh, assistant coach and. You know, Tony won't add something. Uh, Tony definitely does bring a different level of insight. And I think he's just focusing on a lot more fundamental stuff with us at the moment while we, you know, start off with the team. That's about it. But uh, I would just say it's more of a difference between new team versus a you know, team that's been together for a while. When Mike's and Sean Garris first took over the team, we focused a lot more on fundamentals and stuff. And that's because we were a new team. But now that, you know, Tony's taking over kind of a new team as well, you know, we're focusing, we're going back to like, you know, the drawing board which, you know, it's just like a repeat cycle in a way. But I wouldn't say anything that, like, Mike's or Tony, like, they're usually seeing eye to eye on a lot of things. And, you know, it makes sense because the game, the game is very complex, but uh, there's a right way to play. And we're trying to, you know, play that way, but also be confident and do our own thing. What do you feel, what do you feel that, that one good thing is for this team? Because, of course, you know, uh, each team goes about their way of playing and competing and stuff like that. But what do you feel is 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 hundred thieves' way uh, of competing for for this year? Confident, probably. Uh, I would say that. That's like the one thing. Uh, I'd rather us lose confident than just you know lose in a different way. So it'd probably be that way. But only like I said, only time can tell. I have no idea how matches will go and everything. But oh, uh, I don't know how matches will go, but. I just hope that we show up. That's all. Right, right. And now I want to take the the focus onto you in particular, because of course, you know, by this point, you've been with the the Hundred Thieves organization uh, for for more than three years and now, going into to to year number four. <clears throat> and you're at a position now where you're the the oldest standing member or longest standing member within the team, and so. I'm curious on how you view your level of progression um, now as to now that you're heading into uh, the 2024 season with as one of the the, the longest standing members to be with one org uh, within North America. So um, if you could pinpoint one thing that that you felt you changed the most that leads you to where you currently are in your current form, what would that one thing be? Um, I would say probably communication. Uh, I feel like uh, throughout my entire career, my comms have been, um, well, sorry, my comms in the beginning were pretty poor when I was playing duelists and stuff. But now as I play the game more, I make a lot more mid rounds, calling stuff, setting up people up and stuff like that. Um, overall, just, you know, being more aware and helping out where it needs to be. And now that I've played with a lot of IGLs, Steel, um, I, I, you know, Ethan mid round on our team, Nitro, um, beaten and now i'm playing with busio you know I, I get a wide array of how people think of the game and what way it should be played and also what way i want to play the game and you know it's pretty easier once you know when i first played the game i was like i didn't understand why i wanted to do a certain play but now that i play the game a lot i understand why i want to do certain plays i understand why it worked and stuff like that so i think communicating my ideas and um in game also has improved throughout the years and uh, I think it allows me to be good at agents like KO. And yeah. Yeah, I remember uh, Busio just now in, in the recent press conferences, in the recent press conference highlighted exactly that kind of um, aspect within your game concerning the communication aspect and um, how difficult was it, you know, for you to, 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 to go through that in your early years? Um, before making that 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 sudden turn in improvement um gradually speaking for you in particular mm -hmm. 
Uh, I think it first started with like playing other agents. Like you know, when uh, Will started playing Duelist and I had to play like Sky and Ko, uh, I realized I need to support him, but I also need to vocally support him. Like he's gonna be in there, and it's gonna be a lot of chaos. I I know what he's thinking because I've been in those shoes. And what would he want in those shoes in the chaos? And um, you know, me and Will saw eye to eye on a lot of things, so it was very easy for me to you know set him up or do stuff like that. And uh, now that I play the game a lot more. I learned how to, I guess, like set up more roles and you know what people would want in their situations and shoes. And uh, I think it's also a lot easier to come when you're like not opping as much. And mm -hmm. you know, I ended up uh, leaving that role after playing Jeff for a little bit. But yeah, mm. yeah, and of course, um, uh, I now want to to focus on where the team stands in relation to the rest of the league because, of course, you know, now that that um. You guys have added some some good members in Boostio and EU and, and stuff like that. Um, people are having uh, expectations for how this team will perform. And at this moment in time, for you in particular, from your perspective, um, where do you see the current level for 100 Thieves compared to the rest of the league at this moment in time? Though it's true that you guys, that nobody has actually played each other yet. But where do you currently see 100 Thieves right now uh, and stuff like that? I mean, there's only one right answer, and we're the best. So Sick. I'll just say that. Okay, okay perfect. Uh, I love the confidence. <laughs> it, it never it never wavered away after all these years. I, I really do appreciate that. Um, that said, w which team do you, are you most looking forward to facing? You know, which which team do you <laughs> most specifically have an eye towards facing? You know, uh, uh, in addition to those that you have uh, uh, set <laughs> to face in kickoff. Um, I think there's like four in my head. Probably, yeah. Uh, can I name four, or do you want one? Give me all four. Come on, dude. I got. I got to <laughs> know all, all of it. Lev, loud, sun, and then energy. All right, then. No, no, <laughs> no, explain to me why for each. Well, I just thought it'd be funny if I put the our group in there because we're probably gonna <laughs> own that group, and then energy because they're pretty good. I mean, we enjoy practicing against them. Perfect, perfect. And one one more final question before we wrap it up. Um, more so, you know, your expectations, of course, you know, people have their own expectations for how the team and themselves will do uh, for this upcoming season. But where do you see your expectations, um, both individual slash team wise for this year? Mm -hmm. I don't really care about individual as long as we make every event and place well, which I mean, I think if we make the event, we'll place well. So it's just making the event. Making the events the hardest, but once we do that, it'll be easy. So I would say making all three events, that's the expectation. Nothing else, nothing more. Of course, of course, of course. And hopefully you guys will do exactly that once uh, this season does kick off, uh, pun intended. Um, Asuna, thank you so much for taking the time. I really appreciate it. Um, mm -hmm. I really appreciate you taking the time doing this interview. And best of luck goes to you in, for the future. Mm -hmm. You too. Thank you so much.